you know me as Jenna O'Malley, the soul writer. There's so many people that have influenced who I've become and some of you know them well. Miss Grewell, Miss Zabornak, Miss Frizzle, Mr. Feeney, Mr. Keating, and even one Mr. Dewey Finn are all some of the greatest teachers some of us have in some way learned from, laughed with, and more in, we'll say, recent, including the last 50 years or so, public media and pop culture. And considering they're fictional, <laughs> it's ironic that they carried one message in their presentation and existence. Their actors who played these characters are some of the greatest darlings of Hollywood living and not today that we adore. And the ones who are no longer with us, we miss them and we think the world would be a better place if they were here, but they left characters such as the ones I've mentioned to guide us and to never stop living our lives as we learn how to just in general be a better human being. As a teacher, I had one thing drastically in common with all of these teachers, and that was that I cared to see students leaving my classroom wanting the world to be calmer, more peaceful, but more opening and more accepting of those who are not them. This goes down into my roots because I was literally born and partially raised in the ganglands of inner city Baltimore. We moved to Cumberland, Maryland, only for me to see that the whole world has its own gangland. And I could not stay inside the walls, physically or virtually, of a classroom to contain my message that really, truly healing stories do matter. So this is another reintroduction. I do not want to lead the class. I want to walk in stride with those who are expressing their soul's intention for themselves and the world to do better through what they create in their businesses, no matter if it's a book or not. Because some of my clients, I ironically find, are not just book people. They're doing so many other things to heal the world. So if you're here, that means you care to go on a quest of healing. One character, one journey, one business, one book, one chapter, one creation, one sentence, one exchange from a human to another, soul to soul at a time. Welcome on in everybody. My name is Jenna O'Malley and I could not do what I do without you. Let's jam. All right, now that we got the stereotypical mid-series, 90s, super long, open cut, go to intro, my name is Jenna O'Malley and I am your soul writer, author of healing journeys such as those found in The Myrna Annals, a dark romanticy with paranormal and epic elements. Healing journeys and healing stories have always been part of who I am and I didn't even know it in here until recently. So I kind of mentioned where my childhood started, but that has really carried in a through line all the way to how I ran my classroom. I literally had, if you've ever watched the movie Freedom Writers, my classroom in a physical space was split up like Miss G's room. We did debates frequently on social topics because one, the standards told us we had to, and two, I made it about things that kids cared about so they cared to heal the world with those things when they left. So. In my philosophy of education, there's always this element, and I used to say it all the time because half the battle in my classroom as an English teacher, and sometimes it is as a business coach, is simply getting my person I'm working with to agree to give themselves the permission to sit down and write, to sit down and create. I've said it many times on this channel, I grew up during the 90s when literally there had to be a campaign called Save the Arts for the Arts Sake. Why are we saving the arts? Why is there a war on art and creativity? 
Oh, look at the last 30 years. My lifetime. Okay? You need to give yourself the permission to create. Because as I tell some of my students, somewhere someone lied to you and took that permission away from you. What lies are you still believing that other people told you? What lies are you carrying around on somebody else's for half that they, the half that they probably forgot they told you? That one stings because then they don't even remember to say sorry, which is normally what cues you to give yourself permission to let it go. You don't need the apology. You can give yourself permission to create from the soul what heals your soul because it likely heals somebody else because it likely heals somebody else. As a cat mom in this world of creativity, I know that you have to hold certain levels of self-awareness, self-improvement, self-forgiveness, because if you're not willing to do it first, you can't expect anyone to do it after. No one's coming to save you but yourself. There are shorts around here on social media of various kind where people show this glimpse of like someone dressed in military uniform and they come in and slip a pair of headphones on a child's ears and then they go and handle what mom and dad are yelling about. That's your higher self, your past self, coming in to take care of you. I was hoping to beat to them working on some steps out front. So we'll have to deal with some construction noises, everybody. Pardon me. Additionally, as a former teacher, I consider myself not just the person who's saving myself. I'm encouraging through my coaching to get other people to do it. A lot of those teachers I mentioned at the beginning all tend to be the stereotypical stand in front of the classroom type. I'm sorry. No, that wasn't me. I would squeeze my goddess-sized physique into those desks and sit next to my kids. Why? They loved it. Want to know how I know? They would tell me. No other teacher sits down with us in the classroom just to have a classroom discussion. No one else is presenting. There was nothing else up on the board. We were just having a really good talk, and I'm like, I'm going to sit down at their table. I'm going to sit down at their collective cafeteria table, if you count all their desks as one big table, and I'm going to jive with them. That is why I like being a coach more than a teacher. I can be among you and help you. I'm not that far ahead of you in my mastery. Teachers are usually considered ha he he ha gurus up on the mountain masters of their content. Most of them aren't mom and dad. Heads up as the new year starts. Especially in today's society, I can bet you most staff at most schools are having staff teach stuff they're not even certified in. Ask me how I know I'm an English teacher who had to teach history classes for the last five years off and on. Because there was no one to teach the class and, oh, you took this class in college, right? Yeah. Um, I have problems with that. I'm only a couple of steps ahead of the people I help in my career. And it seems like a lot of steps or big leaps, and they are. But the pressure to be a teacher is not something I would personally want anymore, so I consider myself a coach. I feel more approachable that way. I think being a teacher a lot of us have this traditional sense of, I need to treat you with more respect. No, just treat me like a fellow writer, a fellow creator, a fellow soul, intentionally wanting to express what I want to express. And that's all I can ask. If you're here, and especially if you've listened to me ramble for the last 10 ish minutes, and you have not yet subscribed either to this channel or to my Substack or any of the other links down in the description box, 
Consider this your open invitation to feel welcome to show up for you in your pace, in your time, machine, in your stride. Because above all, and I'm going to say this as loud as I can with all the noise over it, take care of yourself. You've always been worth it. And so is your voice because you're healing yourself and others on your journey. Don't give up. Don't give up. See you around.